Hello. In the last video, we looked at multinuclear NMR, where the spin is equal to a half. So protons have a spin of a half, carbon has a spin of a half, phosphorus, fluorine. Now we're going to look at some nuclei that have a spin greater than a half. And when you have a spin greater than one half, then you have the possibility of more than, this should say have a greater than two states. So we've been looking at nuclei with a spin of a half and we said, oh, they can have this up or down. And so it turns out if you have a spin of one, you can have three states. If you have a spin of three halves, you can have four possible states. So there's a lot more coupling that can happen. So let's go take a look at this formula. And this is the formula that you would use. And it's actually a formula that you've been using. This is our n plus one rule. And so let's just take a look at something familiar, our CH2, CH3, our old ethyl group. We know that H has a spin. We're going to go over and look at it. We know that this shows up as a quartet because it sees three hydrogens next door. So we're observing the hydrogen. It has a spin, L, of one half. It sees three nuclei next door, so N equals three. And so if I do this, I get two times spin of a half times, whoops, that is L, times the number of nuclei next door, three plus one. So two times a half, this always cancels out. So we get three plus one, that's our old N plus one rule. I get a quartet. And, but we're going to see if this isn't a half, then it doesn't cancel out and I get some variety. So we'll see that in the next slide. And previously we used the Pascal's triangle. So I had, if I had a doublet, it was a one to one. If I had a triplet, it was a one to two to one. If I had a quartet, it was a one to three to three to one. And these are just added. Now we're going to use the trinomial triangle. This is all in your workbook too. So you can, um, you're going to see, I kind of squished together, but you see slightly different patterns that follow that trinomial triangle. So let's take a look at some spectra. So this is a very simple one. This is the deuterium. And deuterium is hydrogen with a, a neutron in it, so it has a mass of two, and it has a spin of, um, I'm sorry, L, there we go, one. Oh, and it says that up here. So if we go in and we're looking at this, this is CdCl3, and it's, um, you're going to use their formula. So if we look at the carbon, because we're observing carbon, and the carbon is bonded to one deuterium. So we're looking over here and we're looking at that nucleus. And that, so now we have two times L, I've got these in a different order, and one deuterium plus one. And L is one in this case. So this is two times one times one plus one. So two times one times one is two plus one is three. Normally we would think of this as being a doublet n plus one, but because of the spin of one, now we get a triplet. And so this is, and if you go back to our trinomial, right? Our triplet is a one to one to one ratio. So here is the spectrum of CdCl3 in carbon. And you've seen this before. This is your standard. Whenever you're running deuterated chloroform, you see this big triplet at 77. That's your carbon to deuterium coupling. Okay. So we can do it similarly in proton NMR. If you tip it, uh, one common solvent is actually D6 uh, acetone. So that would normally have, whoops, the deuteriums have six deuteriums. And so in the proton NMR, we set it up so you don't observe the deuterium because we're not looking at that range. Um, so 
In this case, you would see nothing, but sometimes we have a little bit of D5. So in this case now, I'm observing the proton and it can see the deuterium next door. And it can, so what we see here is a peak of five. And so if we do our formula, our splitting K equals two times spin of a half times the number of nuclei and it sees two plus one. So two times two is four plus one, and we'd see a five line spectrum. So this is called the acetone six residual peak because it's really the D5, a little bit, that has a little bit of proton in it. And then over here we have some water and some HOD, which doesn't matter so much. And this has a coupling constant of about two hertz. So this is a very uh, narrow peak. So let's take a look at a boron spectrum. And actually we're gonna look at the coupling from boron to hydrogen, but we'll look at both the boron spectrum and the hydrogen spectrum. So if I'm looking at the boron in this case, boron has, uh, is looking over to see the hydrogen. So remember the pattern is, observed, is based on the nucleus that is coupled to the atom observed. So it doesn't matter when I'm in the boron here, what its coupling is, when I, or what its uh, spin is. It's the spin that it's um, coupling to that matters. So this is two times spin of a half, and there's four of them, times four nuclei plus one. So this is gonna cancel out in the boron NMR, um, and I'm gonna get a five line spectrum because it's gonna be the N plus one. So the boron will be split into a quintet because there are four hydrogens bonding to it. Now in the proton NMR, and it's the usual pattern that we see for a quintet, pentet. Um, but if I'm looking at the boron, so I'm in the proton NMR, and now I'm looking at the proton looking at the boron, and boron has a spin of three halves, so now I'm gonna do two times three halves, and there's only one boron. So two, the twos cancel, this is three, and I get a four line spectrum. So this is, the hydrogens are all equivalent, and there's, so there's only one peak, and they see the boron, and it sees it as a four line spectrum. But it's a, a quartet, but in this pattern, oh, it doesn't show it there. Um, it's seeing a four line and it's just the one coupling. So everybody's at the same height. Um, so in your workbook, practice some, I think there's a few other nuclei and predict the coupling patterns based on the spin. Uh, there's also some in Canvas, go look at or in workbooks. So try doing a variety of practice on these.